and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and today's video we're going to be taking a look at and swatching the Kurataki Ganzai Tambi Art Nouveau set. I recently unboxed this in my largest art haul ever video, which I will link above if you want to go check that out. But I got a few comments of people wanting uh, to take a look at this set first. So that is what we are going to do today. I have originally purchased this set from St. Louis Art Supply. It was a while ago when it was really popular and very hard to find. I took a look at Amazon and it is available on Amazon now, so I will link it in the description below if you wanna pick up this set for yourself. I have already prepared a stack of swatch cards and this is all done on some arches cold press watercolor paper. I've had this paper sitting around and I don't want it to go bad. So I want to start using more professional papers. So therefore I wanted to start filling out swatches on Arches paper. So these are about two and a half by three inches. I do have a line down the side to take a look at how opaque these colors are. I have the brand name. Um, KGT is short for Kiritaki Gansai Tambi. The actual color name, the saffron yellow, and then I did list all the pigments underneath because that's the most important part. So I already have a whole stack of all the colors already pre-cut and labeled. So now we're just going to get into swatching and I will talk a little bit about the colors and the pigments and I will probably switch into voiceover mode for that. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do for this swatch session, so that way we can stay zoomed in, is I will do um, each row in the set of four, I will have the colors out, and then once I finish the row, I will move the colors, bring in the next row, and then at the very end, we'll look at all the colors together. So to do my swatches, I'm going to be using this three quarter inch flat brush from a Christy Rice's brush set, because this is the largest flat brush that I have, and I think the flat brush will be the best for doing these swatches. So I just want to first start off saying that all this information I'm giving you is coming from the Kurataki website itself and I will have it linked in the description below. This first color is saffron yellow which is made up of PY1, PB15 colon 3, and PY42. Here is a green gold which is PG7 and PY42. And while it does go on greener, it actually dries slightly brown. So it's more like a warm greenish brown once dry. This is flax beige, which is made up of PR101, PBK11, PY42, and PW6. The PBK11 will give some nice granulating effects that you'll see throughout this set. Here is Acru Beige, which is made up of PB27, PY42, and PW6. When this one is thinned out, it reminded me a little bit like Buff Titanium. Here is Pale Pink, which is made up of PW6, PY3, and this possibly synthetic pigment of 73263-37-3, which you will see is going to be common throughout this set. Here is Coral Pink, again that synthetic pigment, PR101 and PW6. If you know anything about this number, if it's a synthetic pigment or short for another pigment that maybe there's a typo on the site, just let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I found it pretty strange. Here is Potter's Pink, which is made up of PG7, PR101, and PW6. This is Vermilion, which has that strange pigment number, PY1 and PW6. This is very vibrant, even once dried. So 
Starting our third row, we have alizarin crimson, which I would not expect this to be alizarin crimson. It is made of PBK7, PW6, and that strange number. I expected this to be a lot more red, and alizarin crimson can be made by a single pigment of PR83, so I'm not sure if it's pricey, and that's the reason they went with this instead. This is mauve taupe, made of that strange pigment, PW6 and PBK7. Here is old mauve, again that strange number, PB27 and PW6. This is grayish blue, made of PB15 colon 3, PW6, and PBK7. I actually really enjoy all four of these colors as a color scheme all grouped together. Next row, we have cobalt turquoise light made of PY3, PB15 colon 3, and PW6. This is Pale Aqua, made of PY3, PB15 colon 3, and PW6. This is Cobalt Green, made of PG7, PR101, PBK11, and PW6. And the last one in this row is Billiard Green with that strange pigment PG7 and PW6. Starting the next row, we have Shadow Green, which again has that strange pigment number PG7 and PW6. This contains the exact same pigments as Billiard Green. Here is Pea Green, made of PY55, PG7, PW6. And even though this goes on very vibrant, you'll see at the end that once it dries, it actually does mute down some. Here we have Ivy Green, made of PG7, PY42, and PW6. Again, it goes on kind of vibrant, but once dry, it does mute down and become less saturated. This is green gray made of PG7, PR101, PBK11, and PY42. I actually really like this color. The PBK11 makes for a nice granulation once it dries. Moving on to the last row, this is beige gray made of PY3, PR101, PBK11, and PW6. This is yellow brown, made of PR101, PBK11, and PY42.
This is Mars Yellow, made of PY1 and PR101. And lastly, we have Venetian Red, made of PR101 and PBK11. I really like this color. It has really nice granulating effects that you'll see, especially once dry. Now, I am unsure of the light fast rating as Kiritaki did not provide that, so you'd have to look up pigments individually, as I don't think anyone has done light fast tests yet. So here are all the swatches all dried out. I will insert some close-up clips here so you can have a better look at them now that they're all dry. Now I'm going to put them in my swatch book that I'm starting. And I'd love to go through and compare colors with you guys, but unfortunately this is the first set I actually have swatched out. I have to go back through and swatch all my other watercolors, which I may or may not do videos of. It depends if you want to see it or not, but I definitely want to have them all on Arches watercolor paper, even though I kind of cringe when I say that, and you might too, to use such expensive paper for swatches. But I think I want to start heading towards using more 100% cotton paper. So something else that I wanted to point out really quick is that when I swatched these out, I noticed there was no shiny part of the swatches that I remember there being in the 36 color set when I swatched those out. So I pulled out the swatch sheet that I did for that video. And I'm not sure if you can tell but there is shiny parts where there is a lot of paint. And I didn't notice that at all with these swatches on Arches paper. So I did off camera a swatch sheet of the Art Nouveau on the same paper I did these on, which is the Fabriano 25% watercolor paper. So it's mainly cellulose. So I did it with the Art Nouveau colors. And again, they are shiny in certain parts. So I think it has to do with the paper. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when you're using primarily cellulose-based paper, the binder used in the Gonsai Tombi paint which is made up of some animal glue. I think it sits on the surface and creates the shiny parts of the paint, whereas Arches is maybe absorbing it better or dispersing the pigment better. So paper makes a difference, let me tell you. So here is the start of my swatch book. I will need to make a cover. Here are the Kiritake set that I just swatched. And I'll probably do some reorganizing once I get some more um, swatches in here. But I got plenty of sheets. I got some more Arches paper on the way. So I can start filling this up. So if you want to let me know which one of these color or colors was your favorite, let me know in the comments below. That's it for today's video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!